Hi, Ashley here from Your Choice. With the legalization of marijuana happening throughout the United States, it's really important to talk about the risks associated with smoking marijuana. And one of those risks is how it interacts in the brain. Now, no laughing at my drawing, but here we have some neurons, okay? And in the brain are neurons, they communicate messages. So if I get a good grade, this neuron is gonna tell that neuron that I should feel happy. And when we're teenagers, we're trying to make all of these connections so that we can live adult life. Now, for example, alcohol is water soluble. You drink it, it goes through your body, it flushes out and it's gone. Marijuana does not do that. It actually, the THC, which is the active ingredient that gets you high, it attaches itself to the fatty parts of your neurons. So if I were to smoke marijuana one time and I would look at my neurons, I would see a speckling of THC, okay? That is what gives somebody the high. Now, if I never smoked again, I only smoked the one time, about two weeks after smoking, a chemical would come and erase this away from my brain because we're not high anymore, we don't need it, and I would have a normal functioning brain again. However, if I don't quit smoking, every single time I smoke, I'm gonna get more and more of that peppering, which eventually is going to start to form layers of THC around my neurons. So what does that mean? What do layers do? Well, layers start to delay messages. Right, so if I get a good grade, the, T, the message is gonna come in, it's gotta fight through those THC layers before it connect to the next one. And that's why we see teens who smoke generally get lower grades because their brains can't process things as fast. Another interesting fact about these layers is if I am prescribed ADHD medication, anxiety or depression medication, and I'm smoking marijuana, those medications actually can't get through those layers. So if you have a teen at home that has been prescribed one of those medications their whole life and then all of a sudden they come home and they say, I don't need it anymore, is it because they're smoking marijuana? Now, the studies have shown that marijuana can help people with those conditions for a little bit, which gives people a false sense that it's working for them, but then all of a sudden it won't work anymore and they'll feel more anxious, more depressed. Another interesting fact about these THC layers is people can get up to 400 layers. So after 400 layers, they come in and the brain just doesn't really recognize them anymore. And so if I've been smoking marijuana for a while and it's just not giving me the high that I'm looking for, people will then switch to other substances. Now these layers can go away. So if I have 400 layers, um, and layers build all different ways. The higher grade stuff will build faster, the way people's bodies metabolize. Um, substances can either go fast or slow, so there's all different things that go with it. But just in general, if I had 400 layers, it would take at least two years of not smoking for those layers to go away and for me to have a normal functioning brain again. Now, when you say that to teens, they probably think, okay, great, well, I'm just gonna smoke as a teenager and then I'll quit and I'll be fine. But here's the risk with that. While you're smoking and you're building these layers, you're not making connections that, that they need for adult life. So if I smoke marijuana as a teenager and then I quit and I'm 25 years old, I might not mentally be a 25 year old because again, while I was smoking, I wasn't making those connections. So this is one of the risks, especially for teenagers who smoke marijuana. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn more about substances and substance abuse prevention, please visit our website at yourchoiceprevention.org.